Okay, so we'll call this meeting to order, and then do we end this meeting and start the next meeting? No, we'll just call the public hearing call. to order. Okay, so we'll call this meeting to order at 5.38, or no, 5.33. Yep. <laughs> Mine says 5.32. So whatever you want to put down, 533, um, 32. And then at 6, we will have the public hearing. Um, so yep. leave it at that. Yep. So the first order of business is our minutes from last. I make a motion to approve the minutes of February 11th. I'm not sure if I can second not being here last time, but I think well, I can. You can. You I can even vote the minutes if you yeah. believe them to be true. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. One second. All in favor? Okay. Um, financial statements. So Sorry. there's eight warrants presented for signature, totaling $65,071.09. No major changes since our last meeting. Everything appears to be on track. Still monitoring accounts closely as we get towards the second half of the year. I'm happy to take questions if you have them. Um, and then we're going to finish up the budget process this evening as for the timeline. Um, remember, remember back a while, a couple meetings ago, we, we had like a $10,000 line item for maybe the blue school, and then they got knocked down to $7,500. Yeah, we did. We you remember what that them. was? I mean, I tried to look in the new budget to, mm -hmm. to see what line item that could have been, but... So I don't think that comment got in here. We did talk about it at the last meeting, but I didn't mm -hmm. see it in the minutes. Um, and if so, you have it, that's no big deal. No, no, I did. Yeah, we, didn't we knock it down a little bit? Or we're, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so we're bringing it down again for FY21, and what I did find is that it seems to be, at least in the past few years, perhaps since you moved out of that building, kind of a catch-all for unforeseen expenses and or some administrative, such as the copiers and things like that. So okay. I will be working to move things to the proper line item. We necessarily won't reduce any more than we have going into FY21. Um, but getting stuff in the right spot. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I just try to Where figure Where is out. it in the budget now? Like which line, just so we can be clear on that. I thought it was way quite a bit in the back. I thought it is. It's yeah. in the 4,000 codes. Central office. Uh, it's on of page buildings. five, maintenance of equipment under function code 4220 towards the bottom of page five. It has a $16,000 budget and we've only spent $2,000 with $1,000 encumbered. So, um, Say $4,220? It's on um, page five. Nope. Oh, you're looking at next year. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I have she to asked about this year. Oh, okay. Um, did you ask about FY20? or? No, I was asking about the budget. Yeah. So okay. I think I found it under maintenance of buildings on that same page. Yeah. yeah I it said. should be under It says central okay. office repair and maintenance, and it's 11000 Like right in the yeah. middle of the second section on that page. Yeah. Can you see it? Building repairs. Um, Supplies. Maintenance of buildings. Yes. It says 4220 is the code. 4220. Yeah. Okay. And it looks like we've spent well under 11000 in the past three years. Right. And when I talked to Don, he said that they used to have something that all the schools had. And that it sounds like this just was left and used for various purposes, not for the purpose that it says. Right. But we still have central office repairs and maintenance. Would that, would that come out of... Um, that doesn't come out of the more the Wouldn't that come out, still come out of this this line item versus being a frontier building? If there's any maintenance to be done in any of the offices in the future? No, so, so, so would be considered frontier. Right. The central building. office bill goes through Frontier's budget. Okay. And there is a line item for central office expenses. Okay. It is, there's, but there's, there's not a there's maintenance, not a maintenance of building right. or anything right. like that. No. So that's just been absorbed by the yeah. school itself. So It'll be interesting <clears throat> next year if we can keep an eye on that, what we're paying out of it exactly. Because if... Well, we know that's what, that's what she's saying. She, she'll, we'll, we'll move that out for next all year. She, we just didn't want to just erase it and then all of a sudden, you know, not know if there was other expenses yeah, going But I think you're also thinking from the other way, which is well, if we can reduce, I'm just thinking if it, if we don't need to spend eleven thousand, we can drop the percentage. The, maybe the next year for oh, the from the budget. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, you are going to budget eleven thousand dollars for this this coming right, year. Right, it's a good chunk of money that yeah. we should figure out what we want to do with it. Or you can reallocate it to, instead yeah. of increasing a maintenance budget or whatever next year. You just take it from there, yeah. and there's no increase to the budget. Right. Just a yep. just a thought. That's all. Thanks. Okay. So, any other questions on the current budget? You're we're, good on, okay. we're good on we're good on our regular budget and yeah. stuff right now. You mean to be sure I didn't want to spend some money? Yeah. Well. <laughs> Last year, you underspent it here. Now, trying to fix something. That was, that, was her, that was her first year, so that she had to be good. Okay, follow the directive. <laughs> you both were. Well, well, good, but well and that's guess, made the statement. We are, our books were not as well um, counted. That's actually right, the right word. So we wanted we had to be we were, we were, right. we were conservative in all buildings, and so you know Frontiers E and D was higher. Other buildings you know had a little bit more savings because of that. So, okay. Um, yeah. cool. Good and comments. any school choice update or anything? So public comment. We don't have any public here yet. We usually have mayor. We don't even have mayor. She's elsewhere at the moment. Yeah, she's in Florida. If we need to, we get a full turn across the hall. We could go select some basketball. <laughs> so we'll move on to the budget. The, this is just the final discussion within the school committee, right? Or should we just no, wait? No, no. You should. Go, have, you should go do, just do it. Just go to the. Other I would just go full the hearing, have okay. the hearing. We, I mean, for those watching on the camera, we went before the select finance board in the finance committee, and, and had a good meeting. We had a good meeting and talked about it. So if they don't show it, it I would not be surprised because they. They, they gave us the and that was taped also, that yeah. meeting, so you can find that. But I would go straight and take care okay. of the policies. Yeah. Let's go into the policies then. <clears throat> so, um, this is, so, for, make sure you're not confused. Two things happen. So you have, the, this is you the reading of the first set of five, or six, five policies in front of you, um, last meeting. And so tonight you'll be voting on those. You will also, in your packet, were sent the next set of policies, which I will go through separately. Yeah. Okay. Um, last night, um, uh, Frontier just grouped them as a group and voted them all in, just because they're very straightforward policies. They, I'm, yeah, right I'm saying this for your own expediency. Yes. You're welcome to go one by one and discuss yeah. each one and that kind of stuff. But um, you're looking at the educational equality policy. Um, the Equal Education Opportunities Policy, the Homeless Students Enrollment Rights and Services Policy, the Educational Opportunities for Milita Military Children to fall into DESE compliance, the Educational Opportunities for Children in Foster Care to also fall into DESE compliance. So, so moved. To vote for all at once, yes. All in favor? Okay. Good. That takes care of that. So now I will discuss the new ones. The new ones. The new ones are actually um, boring, except the last one. Um, the new ones are removed. Depends on, depends on who you talk to. It's true. <laughs> we'll talk um, about that one later. Yeah, the basic, so you've got this policy newsletter mailed to you. And in, in the first part, there's a list of policies that they, re, they made a recommendation to um, remove because of redundancy or are handled elsewhere or are just the law. And so you, the uh, first few policy, the basic instructional program policy, um, is to be removed in its entirety. Do we know what, either what it was redundant of or what was being replaced by? No. Yeah, that was my question. It seems like kind of a big thing to say. Not it would be anymore. helpful to know what Why? It, Do you think this, what it says here is important? That we should be teaching those things? Um, probably, you know, I can go get the, uh, the I research. Yeah, yeah geez, you are. Okay. I can go get the research of what the, exactly that is replacing. Um, I mean, things like the kids insurance programs. I mean, when I, when I was a kid, we were able to buy alternative insurance for like three dollars and fifty cents for this for the year. Imagine that has something to do with that, and then the other one, the gifts, the solicitation. You can't. Yeah, those things kind of make sense. It was the basic instructional program that I was questioning. So these ones that um, we're suggesting to remove, is that suggestion from the MASC? Because they they basically them? said the MAS staff have found the following policies to be redundant or unnecessary, and we will have them removed from our reference mm -hmm. meeting. 
can, it must be it must in another policy. So I can find out. So, so they're the, removing them from the manual, but they will remain. So the law. they're saying no. no. They're, they're, their manual follows the law, and they help us keep in compliance with the law. So I can, for the next meeting, <coughs> I can contact MASC to get where the, I can. This is just the reading, so I, right. that's where you, you ask the question. Or you could send out a you know. And I can send you a prior, yeah, yeah, so you have an so understanding of what that's for. Yeah. Yeah. That was the only one that I was curious about. Yeah. So um, the other one, is, as uh, Bob had mentioned, the, the guidance program. Um, you know, we certainly aren't getting rid of our guidance programs, right. um, but um, again, going off of the recommendation to remove, and then student gifts and solicitations is now basically ethics law. Um, and then the last one is the one that did have conversation last night at Frontier, but basically there's a lot of changes, and this is per recommendation of DESE. Um, the public comment one? The public yeah. comment to make sure you have a tighter public comment um, policy. Mm -hmm. Now just note that <clears throat> everything in, if you don't have a color copy in front of you, everything in red is the new, everything in black is the old, everything that's crossed out was the old that's crossed out. And, and, Sounds obvious, but there was some, mm -hmm. there we got a little confused. Oh, last, we got a little confused last night that we were changing the amount of time people were allowed to speak. Um, it just kind of it firms it up if you were having. Um, I guess you know we hasn't happened a lot, but if you had continual large amounts of speakers mm -hmm. and you're unable to do business, you want to be able to fall back on a policy that says, "Listen, we get, we have you guys have business to do each each meeting, um, and sometimes the point is made." It makes so, sense to me. Well, it makes some, sense, but um, there are three spots where the wording is a tiny bit different than what was in the MASC one, and I didn't know if that was on purpose or not. Because I, I got them in the, I got them from the MASC. In the mail, so, yeah. the ones you compare. Get all of them. Um, sure. It, it's yeah. probably, I'm just probably being picky. Well, Frontiers asked me to talk to the council about giving having some clear language in there that the chair has the ability to waive this policy for any public comments. And if you have one person in the audience, they talked about signing in and that kind of stuff. And so just having general language that you're waiving this unless there is a, a number of people who need to speak that may interfere with the, you know, not interfere because you want that as part of your business, but me, um, you understand what I'm saying. Take over the meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, because if it says you should sign in and do this other things, we have one parent here with one simple thing. It may be more than it. It may be a small conversation. You want to be able to keep that informality if you share um, decides to keep it. That's a good idea. And so that's what they asked me to look into for language. And as long as the person that's next isn't going to read the same letter that was formulated for the group that might be trying to make a point or something, mm -hmm. which has happened you know, somewhat recent. Yeah, and this is not, and I just want to be, make, be clear, this is... Not trying to get rid of them. Right, this is not going to get rid of This is not a reaction, this is not a reaction to any recent public comments either. This this just right. came through with everything else in this book. You know what I mean? So... Um, it's just defining yeah. what... There must be districts where this is more of an issue. I don't think our district has this issue. I'm sure the same way that it's just addressing We won't things. mention the Amherst. So yeah, I mean there is <laughs> there are some where well, we don't have this issue. there are there are districts where you know we have to fall back on the policy if if someone tried to filibuster a meeting mm -hmm. or a group tried to filibuster a meeting you know that kind of thing um, that does that could occur or comes to every single meeting to tell you the same, same complaint thing. and they say I'm going to come back every single meeting until you make this change well you know what while well, you want to give them that appropriate whatever you also have. This yeah, a, we can say this is a working group. This has you have business to attend to every time. You're in charge of a lot of money. So, all right. So I will get that in. Um, Ryan, can you tell me? It's, let me know if there's where the difference is. The difference yeah, is it's very. I mean, it's very minor. <laughs> but I'll just, for instance, under number three, topics for this discuss, discussion says must be limited, and that may see it says should be limited. I don't care about that. And then it says. Limited to those items listed on the school committee's scope of authority, but the MAC says to those items within the school committee's scope of authority. That seems more appropriate to me to say within rather than listed. We don't have that listed. Our scope of authority. Mm -hmm. It's I don't know. Right. 
and then uh, in number two, speakers will be allowed three minutes. They have up to three minutes. Um, that's also just makes sense. Well, then might be less. Three, than three. Uh, I didn't know if I'm. It, it was that within. Minutes, I up to three minutes, change, right? But yeah. I'm okay. not, I'm not going to not vote for it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I just, I get it, but it's interesting. Consistency is good. If there's any changes being made, I'd like to see that, but yeah. it's not absolutely necessary. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So next meeting we will vote for those policies. Yeah. Yes. And you'll send updates if you can't have any. I'll get the update on the uh, on that first basic instruction of the program. There must be other laws or things that point to that. That's what we get to know. <clears throat> okay. So we'll move on to reports. Um, capital projects. Do we, have, do we have anything that we're putting in the warrants for the town for this school here? Mm -hmm. Or refresh my memory. Went to the capital committee. It's the, um, Just the roads and the floors, okay. right? Yep, the driveway and parking lot. And the driveway, which um, I think is the big nut, the driveway. For next year. Oh, in terms of expense, yeah. yes. Um, and then also, in the, there's sort of an A, B, and C tier in terms of how they view the urgency of those things. And in the third tier is the Efficiency, energy efficiency mm -hmm. updates. Was that talked about more at the last meeting when I wasn't here about the warrant articles? I know we've been no. talking about the carpets right along and stuff like that, but I didn't, I never saw what the price tag was for, are we repairing or are we, we doing the whole parking lot out front? Um, How much it is? I, I don't think I ever saw. Yeah, I think that came more through ten, the ten, yeah. through um, Okay. Yeah, driveway there's, upgrades there's a number is in there. I don't know yeah, the, the number that's currently in the workbook is there is eighty five thousand dollars. But Keith, they're working with Keith on make sure I'm the right school. Um, working with Keith on the estimates on that. Okay. Okay. And then. Uh, and who's the new the new uh, capital or the new building? Bill. Bill. Yeah. So Bill is working. Well, Bill's working with Keith on the estimates of that, but. Um, He's probably trying to incorporate when we do paving in town. It's exactly yes. trying to get the yes, cheapest yeah. price that's possible. Exactly yeah. what, that's yeah. exactly what they're doing. And when we put that forward, we also said if we knew if we had to give them time to put this two years out, you know, drive it will last another year. It's not going to fall Right. But, we, it's but not urgent. It's urgent. not urgent, but it is clearly getting worse and worse each year. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello. The, the number that actually went in there was 81000 Oh, that was made from the town. Okay, good. Yeah, sorry, but the public. Right, so maybe that was updated since then. What? Oh, and also. Removing the skylights. Invitation was six. Oh, oh yeah, five thirty. They've been leaking a long time. That was the one we were trying to tie to the efficiency, but I don't think that's. Do we have a price tag on how much to remove them? It says eight thousand. Do they still leak? Occasionally, but I thought there was a. She likes a little rain inside. No. She likes to look through the lights. The light. So light. Light. Well, so if we remove the skylights, can we also remove the tinting on the windows? Yeah. It would offset the uh, loss of sunlight. That that is an issue. The tinting on the windows. I don't know. Exterior what windows or the exterior? Our whole outside of the. That was just added a couple of years ago. I think uh, Officer Carmichael would argue against that. No, I I was told it was his idea, and when I to take the when I asked off? him about it, he said mm -mm, and he recommended. He said we can recommend. Yeah, it might be something we should look into because it does create some tension in the building. He had recommended the the library windows and the cafeteria windows being tinted. Yeah, so that if someone came in the building. Didn't we just have a conversation with him? About a different school? Yeah, well, I think if you're interested in that, actually, I'm going to walk through. But at yeah. nighttime, with the lights on. It's reversed. It's yeah. the opposite. Mm -hmm. We can see right in clear. So and you can't see out. Which yeah. is an issue in my mind. Yeah. Right. The other idea was to um, do half the bottom ones, tinted and the top ones. Because then you have an actual light above. 
Yeah, there's been much discussion of people who said even if they just took the top quarter off and sliced it so there was one section. Yeah, so do we have a problem with light during the day? Even just, it makes things a little bit darker. If we go out at the, you know, if you go out at the end of the day and you've been in the building all day, it's like, oh, it's been sunny out all day. I had, I had no idea. And when I, I talked to um, Trooper Carmichael about it, he said, yeah, it's not something we would sort of enforce because it's a really expensive thing. Most schools don't have the. Do other schools in the district have it? Or are we the only one? Teacher, I think, aren't you just not? Maybe we could ask Bill to look into it, or I don't know who the right person is to look into it. Well, like one, is it easy enough other than the problem and not putting light on? Is it is it a security thing that we did originally? Yeah. Yes. yes, like we need to understand that. Okay, yeah. and I, I I don't remember who the conversation was with, whether it was a school. They were trying to get, trying to get Conway to do theirs. It was it Conway yeah. that, but it was about the preschool, right? The preschool is not. Yes. Right next to the and they're very exposed. Mm -hmm. um, so it's and that it was a safety thing to yeah. do that. Yeah. Well, and I know they gather the kids in the cafeteria, so they don't want to be able to see everything. Right. There's an issue. Mm. I think it's we'll still good to explore. We'll see through a study we'll see Tuber Carmichael tomorrow morning yeah. at 9 o'clock. Okay, well, there you go. That's right. We can have a discussion. It's okay. the time the <clears throat> Okay, so committee chair, I don't have an update other than I thought we had a good meeting with the finance and select board um, last week or the week before, and um, really want to encourage us to think about if we had more resources, how would we invest those in the school to help move us from good to great? I think that is a really good school, but I think we could be a really great school, and so. I think we need to think about that. I've been doing some research. I'm hoping to bring you guys some thoughts. Mm -hmm. if there's no clearly no one answer, so this is not. There's no silver bullet. But yeah, I'm it's good for us to be thinking. About doing a lot of thinking about that. Since we have receptive that, audience to help support the, the finance, yeah, yeah, I think we want to really think about that for next year. Um, collaborative? I don't mm -hmm. have any. No, I don't have any. That's cool. Oh, bless you. Uh, we had a visit from the Frontier Regional Marching Band, which was awesome. Mr. Cheryl and his students did a wonderful job of bringing some rock and pop classics to our kids. A lot of them didn't even recognize it. Some of these songs, but um, it, was, it was awesome. And it's a really great chance for our little guys who are currently playing an instrument to, to see what the possibilities are in going forward up to Frontier. And also for our, our youngest students to start to think about being able to play an instrument. Um, and we had our pancake breakfast this past weekend. Um, I was a day late in the dollar short. I was the yeah, no, first, time, first time out of the house of Sunday driving somewhere. And we were heading, I think, down towards the blue school, made a turn, I saw the signs. Is that today? Because <laughs> I, I wasn't at the last meeting and you know. Yeah. Was it a good turnout? It was good. It was well attended yeah. um, with school families and also with the, the general town. Good. Um, and we have a, a, a pretty solid core of parents who are very dedicated to the, that particular event, the Pancake Breakfast, and it takes as you know, a lot of times. Using some of them for next year. Graduating. Some of the parents that help out, yeah, their kids are will be moving in. Yeah, that's important. They used to be one of my favorites doing the pancake, pancake <laughs> breakfast. Oh, yeah, cooking. cooking All that cake. sausage and if you bacon. Want to cook that, in now. that kid just smelled like bacon I for mean, like a week, yes. you know? They could always use help. So <laughs> You're welcome to come I'm back. Gonna, I'll be I'll be I'll I used I'm to do gonna that, the spaghetti dinner. I remember making up 10 or 15 oh, no, pounds of spaghetti in that big vat. I'm going to put that in the, the, the meeting minutes that <laughs> Bob volunteered that we're going to yes, volunteer in you for next year. <laughs> um, it was a really, it was a great event. The fourth grade does a um, basket raffle to raise funds for their trip to the Roger William Zoo. Um, it was just, it was a nice day. And wow. the weather cooperated with us. It wasn't very cold, so um, it was a, it was a nice day. Last week I began accepting applications for our kindergarten position. Um, 
to fill the position that's being vacated by um, Vicki Sittig, who is retiring. Um, it was shared internally and then put on school spring. And in two weeks, the hiring team will meet and look at the applications we've received so far and then develop our schedule for interviews. Um, after being up for less than a week, I have a lot of applications, really? so there's, there's good interest. Um, it's a good school, I'll remember, to work at. It's an excellent it's an school. Excellent to school. To um, fifth grade will be heading off to Nature's Classroom on March 31st and returning on April 3rd. This will be the first year we're doing it in the spring rather than the fall. Um, and the rationale behind that was to give students and um, teachers additional time to get to know one another so that we can maybe um, alleviate some of the anxiety that comes with possibly being your first sleep away from home. Um, I thought it was interesting last year being my first year that the kids, I think it was the fourth day of school, they got on the bus and they, and they left and I was very confused by that and we had two brand new students who had moved in from fairly far away, didn't know anyone, didn't know the teachers, didn't know the kids. They did it and it was fine, but we thought moving it to uh, the spring might help yeah. with some of that. So we'll see. Are um, we doing it with other schools still? Other yeah, the, the four schools. Yeah. Um, and then on March 16th, we have our marionette show, so I put the information on there so that you can all join us if, you, if you'd like. I also want to add this uh, spaghetti supper will be Saturday, April 4th. Um, it's a fundraiser for sixth grade spaghetti trips in New York. Folks out there keep that. And Bob already volunteered for the spaghetti so I can do this. Yeah. So. <laughs> what day was that? April 4th? April 4th, Saturday. I'm not sure the time is right. It's like two Probably CDs. a couple of CDs. Yeah, they have yeah. CDs, yeah. school community meetings together in one night. That's tough. I'm backing up on this now. Versus five schools. Okay. I'll leave that to you guys. Superintendent update? Sure. Uh, the, um, what do I have to The, uh, what did I just do? So the first thing, obviously, I had on the ticket was the, uh, the, the coronavirus. Um, I, I sent out a uh, message to families, um, and I'm keeping up the uh, website updated. I'm meeting tomorrow morning with the Four Town Safety Committee and members of uh, Frank County Health people. To just talk about what how the planning is moving forward on that. Should we we'll be prepared? No panic, that kind of thing. Um, it also is affecting you know, Frontier's you know, three international trips. Mm -hmm. Governor Baker came out today and said basically recommending that all trips be canceled. So we're discussing about postponing and so that, you know, and how we're working through that. So it's taking up a lot of time um, and that kind of thing. And, um, a lot of time and obviously worry and that kind of stuff. But just letting you know that that's, that's taking place. And if you have questions about, you know, what we're doing and that kind of stuff, like I said, we're putting it all on the website um, there for families and such as well. Um, I like the video. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it would be good too. Yeah. Um, it's very cute. The, um, the next thing is the we're kind of back with the negotiations for the teachers. Um, right now we're doing a table talk, which came out of the, the previous negotiation to um, have discussions about the, the numbers and um, rather than going back and forth in a large kind of crowd, we're doing it kind of more quickly and to hopefully be able to bring back to the full committee a discussion starting point. So it's a non-binding discussion table that, um, again, is, is, this came out of, the, out of the, the committee, both sides kind of, kind of being at a deadlock. And so being able to get each other's thoughts across, let's get to a smaller group and see that we can have a difference of opinion and um, just be able to talk about it without thinking of the next step. Um, <clears throat> or being committed to the next step, we're all thinking of the next step. The next one is I, hand, I gave a handout 
and I sent you guys the link from the website regarding, but SOA, the Student Opportunity Act, um, has um, strings attached to it. So basically, for Chapter 70 money, the state is requiring us to submit a to submit a plan on a, by April 1st about how we are going to use the new funds for um, you know for educating um, the students and looking at the achievement gaps in our districts. So you know, basically, well, we can. That's my Chapter 70 money increase. Here. So yeah, right there, two thousand, <laughs> just over two thousand dollars. We have to fill out a, a form, and I have to bring it back to all of you. And I got to do it, a separate one in each district of our five districts to explain how I'm going to use the two thousand dollars of that extra chapter seventy money to work on this. And they said, well, not just the extra money, but how are you using all the chapter seventy money mm -hmm. to go into this. You know, basically, the law has language in it that makes schools accountable to the additional money to address the way we didn't get. Any really to help us? You know, two thousand dollars isn't going to mm -hmm. is, you know doesn't uh, do any kind of coal coal movement within our budget. So um, anyway, so that'll be presented at the joint meeting. Um, Kim McCarthy's putting that together, and Sarah we just putting it together as well. Okay. Um, so it will just be presented there. But I'm just kind of stating that it is going to be after the April first. Um, per the program, they said go ahead and submit it without school committee approval, although you have to have school committee approval with it. So they clearly are not um, that serious about um, I think, to be fair to Desi, I think they're just trying to keep up. Um, they really are concerned about the uh, 35 schools that received a lot more money. Mm -hmm. Everybody else just received um, $30 per student. Mm -hmm. um, thing. So that's where that. Yeah, they said multiple times in that letter to keep it concise. Yes, they're trying to they're trying to do it there, but my cynical side gets that it's a larger big brother. I mean, this can be part of other reports for accountability to the chapter seventy money they've been we've been receiving since nineteen eighty and been going down down since nineteen eighty, and more local burden, and now they're making us have more accountability to the less money they send us each year. But but I think did you guys get that email about the workshop on the chapter seven mm -hmm. yeah. on Monday? Are people going to go to that? I'm out of town. I'm sure. hoping to go. I yeah. I said I was going, but I haven't checked with the home schedule yet. It seems like that might be a good opportunity yeah. to I have talk several about members. some of those right. things. I have several members that are going to that. Because mm -hmm. Joyce made a really good point in our meeting about how chapter seventy money we get less per student than we do for um, school choice kids yep. in the district. So. I think that that was the first time I actually heard that. I didn't really realize it was that. So if we get a student, we will we'll double one student will we'll double the increase that we get in Chapter Seven. <laughs> wow. We don't want to look at finances that way. No. But it is a no, good segue is, to your public hearing. <laughs> yeah, it is a good thing for us to keep in mind to push the our state reps and things on to try and help us. So we'll move to the hearing. Do we have to go to executive session afterwards for? No, nope, it's going to be. But that's going to stay on there throughout negotiations. Mm -hmm. It's your negotiations. If you ever want to talk about it, you can ask me. So, so there's. So you already have what you can. Can you give me like two minutes to <coughs> stretch? Yeah. I'm locked up here. Oh. When did that happen? Knee replacement two and, and a half weeks ago. Really? <laughs> See what happens if you join this committee. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No fun. Mm -hmm. Katie, what was the date of the chapter 70? It's Monday the 9th at yeah. the JFK Middle School, which is nice. I really wish I was going to be in town to go. And it looks like um, Joe Comerford's going to be there. And someone from MASC is going to come and talk about it. Sort of how it works, and um, that Laura um, Fallon. Yeah, she is on Northampton School Committee. She is now the de delegate um, leader for our area. Yeah, for oh, okay. District Five. I think yeah. Yeah. That's new, and she's going on some trip to DC as part of that. Mm -hmm. um, Shelly and I are meeting with the all this area state reps and senators mm -hmm. on Friday. There's a round table with superintendents and then to talk about the funding and 
what we're getting, what we're not getting. They know that. They've already come out to, yeah. um, they came out to Sunderland um, a few weeks ago. And so, you know, they've heard that other side of it. But we're kind of sitting down and talking about a lot of the stuff that came from that, into that bill was because of these conversations about the things like, you know, foster care and transportation of foster students and, you know, those kind of things where really, there's some, you know, some districts that get really hit with those numbers. Right. You know, the, the state doesn't see in these kind of finite areas. So, yeah. like I said, so we have a, a luncheon. That's good. The, well, the, three the more four. dialogue, the better. And yeah, it is. Keep them informed. Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah, I'm good for a little bit. So I have a little script here that I've been given to follow for the hearing, which is that we need to take a roll call. So one is just we're calling the hearing to order, right? Uh, 610. Um, we have to do a roll call. So, Bob? Yes. Kella? More. Uh, Maureen? Yes. Katie? Yes. yes. Um, and I just wanted to make sure everyone knows this being recorded, which I should probably have said at the beginning of the meeting, but we are always recorded, so know that. Um, and I want to invite people to speak if there's anyone wants to speak on the budget. We have one guest here. <laughs> um, this is your chance to share your thoughts on the FY19 or FY21 budget. Okay, so you'd like me to go first. First is your. Oh, no, I've already heard it. Yeah, heard it I don't think around. we were planning to really revisit the budget at this point. I mean, you just do that in Maybe summary. Do a, we're we'll proposing. Shall we do a quick summary for everybody? Well, it is a public hearing, so yeah. I imagine people who will watch right. this will want to know. It's the same budget from last meeting, the same budget we presented at your meeting, which was also right. on TV. So right. go to YouTube, right. go back to the <laughs> 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 Just give me a yeah, give, give, the, the, quick, give the quick numbers. Give yep. a quick summary of where things are. Yep. So we are looking at a 2.51% increase for Waitley Elementary School for FY21. That is a $44,827 increase for a total town appropriation of $1,830.13. And that is just for the general fund, so just our local budget does not include other funding sources. Uh, with our other funding sources, we're looking at a $2,211,650. I said that wrong, $11,650. Um, for total funding, which includes school choice, um, early childhood revenues, any grant funding that we might get, et cetera. So it's in the top line and then the bottom as well. It gives you the general form and then the total. Uh, so, you know just in your head. So the primary increase is due to salary and wage increases. There were some changes in certain function areas that increased expenditures. However, we also decreased expenditures, so the net increase to anything that's not salary related is very minimal. Uh, a couple of things to highlight, because they were more significant, um, is that we brought $3,000 back onto local fund that was previously funded from a grant for teacher mentor stipends. Our SPED contract services, which is if we need any consultation services for special education students, we added $5,000 to cover those costs. And then we did increase the technology, instructional hardware, and software by 4,600 based on the needs of the school and the IT department in order to maintain our technology to the highest standards. Uh, major decreases include a reduction in separation costs due to no retirement payouts in FY21, so that was almost a $9,000 decrease. And then there were some other minor decreases to other function lines that you know, total about $6,000. Uh, again, largest increase to the general fund is uh, salaries and wages. So uh, we're looking at approximately $42,600 for potential teacher salary increases. Contract is not settled, but we're still in negotiation, so that could fluctuate, but we have a um, percentage increase built in there for COLA and includes column and step movement. The IA salaries are um, settled on their contract, so that is an $8,700 increase, which includes COLA and any step movement. And then we also have wage increases included for non-union personnel, such as administration, principal, secretaries, central office staff. Um, that actually 
brought a reduction to Waitley's budget due to a cost sharing percentage change, as well as some personnel changes in central office and administration. What are the major highlights? Happy to answer questions or comments. It's a little different from last year where we were trying to save a, a full-time position. We were at mm -hmm. around five and a half last year, and we're grateful that the town allowed us to keep that full-time employee and have a little higher percentage. So I was kind of happy and coming back this year with almost a perfect two and a half, which I, I thought was great too on, on Shelly and everybody else's part too. So. And the school choice, maybe just summarize where we are on that, because that was, again, an important part of last year's yeah. discussion. Um, so our school choice revenue looks to be um, down for FY21. We had a few students leave, and which included um, a student who was receiving special education increment. However, we are in a healthy position with school choice still. find it so I can tell you what we're looking at for year end. Um, we're talking about spending a year in arrear at this point. Um, so FY21, I mean, I'm sorry, at the end of FY20, uh, we are looking at having a balance of 219,000 in our school choice expenditures, and at the end of FY21, having a balance of 173,000. So we're spending a little bit of our surplus. Um, and spending a little bit more than our anticipated revenue. However, we'll still be in a really healthy position. And as we've learned this year, a lot of things change along the year. So as long as we plan to try and keep a surplus of a full year, that's a good goal. Absolutely. And we are, the other, only other comment I want to say is the preschool is doing really well and we have good revenue there, so we are able to push a little more of their expenses off to the preschool, which is also what's helping us keep the budget relatively um, low this year. So we need to be mindful of that and make sure that we're not pushing too much onto the preschool. Can you, um, can you tell me what we pay out of that revolving fund for salaries or whatever? Is it For early childhood? Yeah. yeah. I mean, just the people it's, want it's to know. It's on that list that you have at the very last page. In here? It is, but it's green. Then, oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's maybe a little different. I I'm happy to pull it up quickly okay. too, but you can certainly look in there. Um, the bottom line. On there. One of the columns is EC. Yeah, so it tells you this is the total, but that's not all. Okay. There is a little bit of expenses in there for um, supplies and materials. It's primarily okay. salaries and wages, which is that says ninety five thousand almost. Okay. I just didn't know if, I know we try to pick up a little bit more every year as long as we have a, a plentiful balance there that we could take more off of other things, whether we're paying out of school choice, um, uh, the regular budget for salaries, are we, you know, are we, are we taking more, are we taking more out of that revolving fund to pay for salaries? I mean. Uh, the, only the preschool salary. That's what I'm talking only about. I'm just talking about, pre, I'm just talking about preschool. Right. Right. But I think one of the challenges is in in having the full day preschool, we have to hire more people to to run it. So we're sort of trying to bat, not put that burden on the on the school. And that's what I'm talking about. I mean, to pay for the, that's my understanding of how we're thinking about it. And we're able to do that pretty comfortably okay. right now. It's not all the salaries because some. Some of the teachers were here before we started the preschool, but right. we're trying to fund some of those extra costs. So the program is anticipated to have about 120,000 in salaries next year, of which uh, 95 um, will be paid from the revolving fund. Okay. So there's a very small portion that's on that's the local still budget. Still on the local budget. Um, and as Katie said, you have to be a little bit careful with that. You don't want to overexpend it. You know, preschool is one of those fluid um, <laughs> classrooms where, you know, we have an idea of who's coming and going, but people also have a lot of choices for preschool. So mm -hmm. um, we certainly want them to be left with a healthy surplus at the end of the year so that if there are any unforeseen circumstances, um, we do have some money saved up. But we are, it's, it's nearly funding itself. 
which is which is what which we is wanted, good, really nice. which should hopefully help also bring a pipeline to the school yeah. longer term. I mean, the more things that we do throughout the school, putting more things back into the budgets where we are having spending a lot of the school choice money for different things. Where I'm a firm believer back, because I've been here so long. Mm -hmm. I remember the days where we're, we were spending, I won't bring up this, uh, the computer lab, but we were able to spend $50,000 on a computer lab for the kids. Mm -hmm. It's not paying a salary, it's something for all the kids could use and stuff. And that's mm -hmm. what I'd love to do is more if in the future, if we do get more school choice kids, is to take more of that money and use that money for the kids instead of paying for a salary in, unless we get in the bind or something like that. Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely have salaries on school yeah. choice, and yeah. I don't think we're going to avoid that given the amount of salaries that are here. Um, but you're right, if we can move anything that's a recurring expense onto general fund, we should look at that. Um, and it should be used for, you know, perhaps some of those one-time expenditures that instead of putting in capital requests or warrants, you know, things like that. But you know, it's, it's, it's hard for all of our small elementary schools <laughs> to absorb all of the costs that are. Because I know choice. all it takes is one poor kid that comes in here that needs extra help, and all the extra money that we have is is going to be take, taking up with them, which we're, we're going to do. I mean, we're, we're obligated to take care of whoever comes in that front door from our town. And if it comes in from another town, their school choice, that town will pay for Okay. That yeah. goes to the other conversation of working with the representatives of the state to really help everybody right. manage those costs. Don't forget, school choice has probably been at 5000 as long as I can remember. Yeah. And I'm not even sure what year school choice even started at 5000 yeah. Everything else has gone up except for school choice. Right. Four chapters have we funded. Well, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we don't need yeah. to get into all that. Um, great. Well, I also want to acknowledge and recognize all the good leadership and management that's been going on in these different areas by Chrissy and by Shelly. And uh, the school lunch is another example of a program that's really thriving and doing well. And we're able to find itself relatively fully yeah. now, which is a big change yeah. from a few years ago. So. Yeah, and I, I've left that in for FY21 on local budget mm -hmm. in the event that, again, we have some unforeseen circumstance or the program isn't as healthy um, again next year. But um, they seem to be But it seems like it's doing really well. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. OK, now we're ready for comments. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Paul, you got to go well, easy on us this year. Right. <laughs> Look, I want to thank you first for the invitation. Um, and I wish there were more that followed me in. Um, but the um, prime reason I came tonight, one, was to listen to the public, um, to your pre presentation. Um, and the second sort of dovetails to what Katie spoke to a short time ago about excellence in the school. And what also Bob spoke to uh, regarding programming and things we can put direct to student. Um, I think a couple of things make people uneasy about the educational budget. And specifically that, look, a 2.51% increase, you know, everybody loves that on the pocketbook. It's not a stretch. Um, but on the value side, are we getting what we have? Things kind of, you know, come on, 2% increase, things are kind of going in the same direction. Not, not that it's bad, okay? But how do, we, how do we set this school apart? How do we make this school um, a little um, more attractive, okay? And, uh, and I think, at first, it starts with goals. And if I was there and we, uh, and we had this meeting on that camera, I'd be using that whiteboard. And there'd be goals, and there'd be how we got to the, how, how we plan to get to, to those goals. And those goals represent why we're asking you for more money, okay? But when you don't ask for more money, People sit back and they say, well, I don't think there are any great goals. It just kind of 
keep things, not that things are bad, things are good, but those far-reaching goals out there. And we would kind of like to see that. Uh, I know a lot of people would like to see that. A lot of people would like to see no increase. But I think from a value pers perspective, we're paying two plus million dollars to keep this school going. Um, it's the best economy we've had in my lifetime. If you can't get more money out of this economy, then, you know, I think you've got to look around and just start to ask. Um, but we depend on the experts to say, we need this amount of money to put this program in place so that your students, your kids, are better prepared to go to Frontier, to go to the middle school, or to go to a private school, wherever they want to go. But we know when they get into that environment, it's like hot knife through butter. They've got it. Um, I don't know if we have that right now. And, um, but I think it's achievable. And um, I think you've got to ask for it. Um, and not that I'm trying to drive the budget up, I'm trying to drive value um, with this. So, with that said, um, I have only one suggestion regarding programming or in addition to what we have here at the school. And that would be to do some research into a climbing wall for the gymnasium. And um, I've been to another, I've been to a number of gyms throughout the area, and a number of them have these climbing walls. Um, and it seems to me, in this environment, long winters, we don't have pools, we don't have ice rinks, you got to give them something else. And I think a climbing wall might be something that we should look into. Now, I spoke to the uh, phys ed guy here Mr. Uh, on Saturday. And um, he told me that he has advocated for it and actually asked for it in the past, and nothing ever came of it. So I would highly, whether it comes from town funds, whether it comes from whether, whether the PTO does some kind of fundraising to put it together, I would strongly encourage that it's one thing. Kids see it right away. Kids get excited about it. Kids can accomplish something in one class and feel good about themselves. Now, if you go to the Hatfield Elementary School, they've got a great wall. And um, it's just very well done. So, um, so that's, that's just the only comment that, that I have regarding a value to come back to, to the school. Um, other than that, um, I would also advocate that we keep a close eye on SPED, special education, um, to total costs in the school. Um, special education is here. We've lived with it for a long time. It's become, it's become the norm. It's part of our vernacular. And there was a time when it was split out. Everybody was looking at SPED costs. Today, we look at the charter costs. We look, we look at school of choice costs. In five years, I think the same thing will happen. Charter school and spent and you know school of choice will just be you know part of what we do, and we'll kind of lose that and we'll get intertwined with all the other costs. So I would strongly recommend that. And um, there is talk and there is concern that we don't look at costs within the classroom and without. Um, outside of the classroom. We, we have $2.2 .2 million. How much of that is directly spent in the classroom? Kid, teacher, books, computer, whatever you want to say, what does that cost in that pie, that $2.2 .2 .2 million pie? How much of that pie goes directly to student education? That's something that I think we should look at and I think we should track over time. I'm done. So, I mean, I'd be willing to 
Are you sure? Kick, kick, kick that around. Yeah, I'm done. Are you sure? Last night you went a long time, but you were bouncing <laughs> around with your buddies last night from the other towns. I mean, we're happy that you came, Paul. Wish more people. I wasn't at the public meeting. I just, I was going to try to come last Tuesday night. I Understood. Just, I didn't have enough strength to make it there and stuff. But um, I, uh, my only question to you, you know, you're the one that's here. How's all the other finance people looking at this? They got plenty of time, right? The, yep. the budget, yep. the increase, and the whole yep. thing. Yep. It, was there any complaints about no, that? I think, or? I think everybody's happy. I, I think, you know, it's always, it's never the meeting. It's always the meeting after the meeting. The, those little meetings, the little sidebars, little conversations. And um, I think some of what I shared with you tonight was, was came out of some of that. Um, and I'm not just, I'm not here as someone representing the finance committee, but I'm a taxpayer. Um, and I'm grand grandfather. I got my kids in this, my grandkids here. One so of them, one of them was standing outside watching me the same time. <laughs> <laughs> she went back inside. <laughs> you didn't look around. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. One clarification on the sped. What is the reason to watch the sped? Keep a close eye on the sped. Well, we there Just was a time to have a better understanding. There was a time when we had us. It was broken out. Uh -huh. You saw all sped costs versus non-sped mainstream costs, mm -hmm. however you want to term it. Um, but today it's kind of interwoven into a lot of different areas and, and mm -hmm. which is, I mean, which is, if that's how you have to do the accounting, fine. But from a lay person looking at what's going on, mm -hmm. where, where, where are the dollars going? And, and, and that, I think we have particular interest in that. Mm -hmm. okay. Years ago, it used to be, how come you never spending that school choice money? All yep. you got, all you finance guys. Well, yeah. For it. Yeah. You well, you could. But we also used to say, back then we weren't taking in the future. We were paying. We were having extra money that year. Right. And what are you going to do with it? How come you're not putting it on the on the budget? And what our person, if that pipe broke and it was a cold night or this and that, we wouldn't go back to you guys or the town to get money. We'd be going to school choice because we had a little bit of a rainy day fund. Right. in the school choice and that's you know I'm a still a firm believer having a little bit for a rainy day to help out whenever we can you know I just some yeah. years we can some yeah. years we can you know, no question that there have been times that were very tight but if but if you recall those times if you look at the economy and you look at the interest rates you're talking late 80s 90s well we had interest rates that was through the roof, and there was very little optimism in terms of the economy. Today, the economy's flying. Things are good. If you're going to ask for money, you know it's now. Well, and the town needs a good school to thrive, so we need to be partnered. The cap, the, it's a direct correlation between, between the value of your home and your land and the quality of the school in that town. Point blank. So. so I just wanted to say thank you to the Finance Committee and also the Select Board for their <laughs> partnership because I think the dialogue has, yeah. has been very helpful and yeah. good and I hope that we can all continue to work together. And we're very happy and proud of the fact, you know, the, the accomplishment that the school made in regards to uh, the standards in the state. Um, I, I think it's a big deal. Yeah. Okay, others may not think. <laughs> <laughs> That's the elementary school. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a big deal. Um, you know, others may not agree with the criteria or, or, or any of the, you know, the, maybe the outcomes. But the fact of the matter is you're going to live in that environment and you, sh you move the needle in that environment. Mm -hmm. So, hats off to you. Celebrate that. And we'd like to see it continue. It's, just, it's one piece of land. It's right? one, right. Um, there are places where that is, that is the piece that overwhelms everything else. Yeah. And one of the great things about being here is it's just one piece of a, a fairly well-rounded experience here. Right. I agree. So, all right. Great. That's well, it. thank you. That's all I have, Paul. Thank you. Thanks. So, I think we're all set on our budget then. Mm -hmm.
I make a motion to approve this year's budget of uh, two million two hundred and eleven thousand six hundred and fifty. One million eight hundred and thirty thousand. Yeah. Later. Good job, everybody. Good job. Adjourn the meeting uh, exactly an hour later. Six thirty eight.